All right, so this is the last little bit of chemistry for you guys. This is video one for this week, and it's called Counting Atoms. Yes, I said counting atoms. Well, what if we can't see atoms? Last week, we talked about how we have physical and chemical changes and that there is evidence to tell us that these atoms are rearranging themselves. Well, sometimes you're going to find a chemical equation or you're going to be able to see the chemical reaction on paper. And when I say that, it's kind of like a word problem. So we have to know the individual parts. And that's where counting atoms is going to come into play. So you know that each individual element is made up of a particular chemical symbol. We were talking about on the periodic table capital letters and capital and lowercase letters. So chemical symbols are a little bit like the letters of the alphabet. You have A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. And each letter has a different sound. Well, chemical symbols are the same way. Each symbol is unique to the element that it represents. I've given you three symbols. Each one begins with a capital H, and you can see why we do a capital and a lowercase, because a capital H represents hydrogen, whereas a capital H lowercase e represents helium, and a capital H lowercase g represents mercury. Well, those are single elements, but we've also talked about how atoms of particular elements can react with other atoms to form compounds, and compounds are going to have something called chemical formulas. Well, if the chemical symbols are like letters, then the chemical formulas are like words. And each formula is unique to the particular substance. So H2O, anytime you see that, that's water. H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide, and that is a deadly difference. So you probably noticed in the last chemical formula that there were some tiny little numbers, the H2O. So what are those tiny numbers? In some of our formulas, the small numbers that follow the chemical symbol is called a subscript. Sub meaning below or smaller than, and then script just meaning letter or number. Now, this subscript's job is to tell us how many atoms of that particular element are in that molecule or in that compound that we have of that particular substance. There's a few things to remember, and you'll see them listed below. Subscripts only apply to the element directly in front of it. Just like in math class, if there is no number listed out front, you assume that that means 1. If you had an X or you had a Y in math class and no number in front of it, then you were to assume that that meant 1. Well, a subscript is the exact same way. We assume that there's one atom of that element if it's listed in the chemical formula. And subscripts cannot change. They are put in place. I showed you the example of H2O and H2O2. That's the difference between having a subscript of 2 for oxygen and a subscript of 1. We have something that we can drink and we have something that we cannot drink. So here are a couple of examples. The first example is NaOH or sodium hydroxide. I've drawn the picture out to the side to represent one atom of sodium, one atom of oxygen, and one atom of hydrogen. There were no subscripts listed, so you can see that there are three individual atoms in that particular chemical compound. But then I gave you a second example with magnesium chloride, and you'll know that chloride has a small number two. There's one atom of magnesium and two atoms of chlorine in every molecule for three total atoms. Now sometimes there are big numbers out in front of the chemical formulas. These numbers are different from the subscript. This number is called a coefficient. The coefficient represents the number of molecules. So the total substance, how many of each one of those substances do I have? Again, we have some things to remember. The coefficient applies to all elements in the chemical formula, so everything directly behind it. To find the number of atoms, you distribute, kind of like in math, coefficient times subscript. And if no coefficient is listed, again, we assume it means 1. So here's your example, five zinc sulfates. And you'll notice I've drawn each individual molecule so you get a chance to see how many zincs, how many sulfurs, and how many oxygens. And that's a wrap.